Welcome back to the Rockman Power Hour, a podcast where we talk to the most interesting people in the world of pop culture and uh, everything in between. And uh, thank you for joining us on this journey. We are really, really appreciative of everybody that tunes in every week to our podcast, whether you are streaming it on audio or whether you are watching us on YouTube, um, it is greatly appreciated. So make sure you like and subscribe and uh, tell your friends all about this uh, podcast because we really enjoy doing it. And uh, without you, there is no us. That is uh, without a doubt true. Um, I want to bring in my co-host, Ryan Stick. Mr. Stick, what is going on, my man? Uh, you're hot off the heels of your birthday party. Have we talked since that? Yeah, my ego is out of control. I got drunk on attention and, and booze because I do that once in a while. But I love your pun. Without you, there is no us. And yep. uh, that was delightful. Thank and in you. my old age, uh, I've been I've been I've been slinging dad jokes for a few decades now, but now uh, you know I'm a dog dad and I'm uh, getting up there and uh, yeah, my old age, uh, like you know, I'll rewatch a show and like you know when I first saw the said show, I felt like the the angsty teenager, and now I feel like the parents telling them to shut the fuck up. It's a it's a life changing thing, and uh, I dig it, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what happens when you get older, and yeah. um, so don't worry about those pictures of you at the. Uh, at the at the birthday party and stuff oh where where i'm i'm a little uh, like i had surgery right so i'm a little right. uh i put on a few right. during those during those times when i was eating my feelings and uh trying to get stronger by sitting very still and i saw a photo of myself that we went to this great bar it's called um uh le retinue pub the Fe festive and uh thank shout out to mike thank you very much for letting me have the room I've known Mike forever. He started out in a band when we were teenagers. He was in a band called 50 Stars Anger. I was in a band called Judgmental. Me, him, and Richie from the Nailheads were the only three dudes in the city at that point that actually wore eyeliner proudly. Mm. Later on, having nothing to do with us, emo would really become a thing. 80s stuff really came back in fashion, and a lot of people wore eyeliner. But I distinctly remember how embarrassing it was to wear it back then and how brave you had to be <laughs> to walk around with it at yeah. that point. But, you know, chicks dig it. So, <laughs> so uh, yeah, anyway, that was a birthday party, and I'm seeing a video of me doing the punching machine, and in my head, I'm like, oh, man, I'm going to show this machine. And I'm punching it. I'm like, man, I must look cool. I got my hair slicked back. I got a suit jacket on. I'm wearing my glasses. I must look pretty sharp and strong. And I look at the video and I'm like, I look like Drew Carey having a fit. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So that being said, I'm going to hold back on the soft drinks. Going to walk around a little bit more. Going to try yeah. to get a little back into my casual lazy weight as opposed to my waiting to feel better from surgery weight. So yeah. Listen, weight is something that can come on and off really easily. Um, yeah. And, uh, so oh, it comes and goes so quickly, man. It's like, it's, it's like the wind. But as you get older, it gets a little harder to stay off. And, oh yes. And you got to move around more and you got to, basically the, the calculation that I figured out, not that I'm always one that uses this calculation, but the calculation that I figured out is you've just got to eat less move around a little bit more but the key is eating less and i don't mean eat less in the sense that i don't mean eat less like starve yourself yeah but you really got to watch what you put in your mouth um, okay and you know me bringing you 12 homer donuts probably wasn't the best thing to do i thought you were going to share those. thank you I, and i did i shared my feelings about them on you didn't social share media i brought yeah. so uh, so homer, <laughs> tell people about homer donuts so yeah. Homer Donuts are these donuts that um, it's this donut company that opened up in Montreal. Uh, a lot of people thought it was a pop up shop. It's on Sherbrooke Street. I don't know what the whole deal is with Homer Donuts, but they're freaking good. And because uh, Ryan's a big Simpsons fan, big Simpsons yeah. fan, I decided to go grab you a dozen Homer bigger donuts. after the bigger after the box. Right. So I decided to go grab you some Homer Donuts. Maybe maybe you'll be able to throw in a shot of the Homer Donuts in here. Um, if not also, well, but yeah, but anyways, like check it out. These are the 12 Homer donuts that I gave Ryan. It's a little video of them right now. You can see them. They were incredible. <laughs> um, there's, you can see the original, the pink ones, the, the original Homer donuts, and then he moved through and there's the cookie monster. And there was also, um, a cereal donut, which you said were marshmallows. Anyways, I waited an hour to get you those donuts. I think we talked about this last episode. Did we? I don't remember. It doesn't matter. It's worth, it's worth talking about sec a second time, but. Having said that, I brought you these 12 donuts. 
which I waited a long time for and I didn't care. And I got in right before they cut the line and because they literally cut the line at four o'clock. I'm so excited. I'm like, we're going to bring these to Ryan's party and he's going to put them on the buffet. And no, here's the thing, man. No, no, no. Let me tell the story. No. I went okay. Down. Fine. You're going to tell a bunch of bullshit to save face. Mm. But, but the, the, the reality is when I opened up that box and I showed you the donuts, I had originally put them down on the, um, on the table where you had your, your, your buffet spread for everyone that partake in. And you took that box of donuts and you're like, no, we're going to put those over here. And those are coming home with me. And nobody got to try them. Well, yeah, because here's the thing. Every so time you wonder why you have a little bit of post post yeah. fucking hospital weight on you. Cause you had yeah. 12 fucking Homer donuts. Well, that and not moving for six weeks much. You but- sh- if you would have shared those Homer donuts. Yeah. You would add two less two two weeks less of exercise to have to listen. There was more to me to love a lot longer before that party happened. Let me tell you, um, but yeah, with the with the Homer donuts, it's that you know I got them and I'm looking at them and I'm like, I am not hungry right now in the slightest because I need to I need to weigh in if my friends still like me because it has been like five years since I've had a party, you know. Yeah. Four or five years since I've had a big party where you put yourself out there and you invite multiple people and you're like, oh, God, please like me, <laughs> please. And 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 so I'm looking at the donuts and I'm like, I, I want to have these when I want to eat and I want to have these with coffee and I want to really appreciate these. And if I leave these donuts on this fucking table, even if I move them after the first blood has happened, yeah, the fucking bloodhound fucks that i know and i call my friends and family are going to be eating these all night even if i hide them (laughs) so so i'm like i must i must destroy the scent before they pick it up so i so i hit them well and and i enjoyed them for the next three days and yes um my friend jared came over from uh, he he was in town from ottawa and he came over the next day and him and his uh lovely girlfriend ashley they had some and yes, my mom had some. There was sharing. It just wasn't okay, in the right. bar where inevitably I would not have gotten a bite of it had I not pounced on it like I like like a hungry mad person. Um, all right. Well, listen. Enough of that. Let's uh, let's get to the uh, let's get to uh, thanking because we have to always say thanks. Um, you know when we do this podcast because there's people that make this podcast possible, and um, we have to thank right out of the gate our title sponsor, Heartbeat Hot Sauce, the Heartbeat of the Rockman power hour. Um, we're, I'm pulling a double whammy right now because not only am I going to show off the salsa verde, which is the one that I've been absolutely enjoying the most lately, but, um, I've got this, which is very nice. This is the heartbeat hot sauce flannel from Dixon. What? Yeah. Got to get you one of these. Excuse me. Maybe for your next birthday. Yeah, maybe if I'm not, if um, I'm not dead by donut, like, uh, you won't be. <laughs> Yeah. But uh, but check out Heartbeat Hot Sauce, the heartbeat of the Rockman Power Hour, and use our promo code Rockman20 right down there. And you'll get 20% off your entire order. And that coupon never expires. Ever, ever, ever. And uh, so, yeah, thank you to Heartbeat Hot Sauce. Dustin Poirier going to be fighting again soon. Um, big news. A lot of people are really, really excited about it. Stepping into the ring, back into the octagon. It's going to be a great fight. I believe it's June 1st that he's going to be fighting. So go Team Heartbeat. Go Team Dustin Poirier. And go get some Heartbeat Hot Sauce at heartbeathotsauce.com. Great, great Canadian company that makes incredible hot sauce. And um, listen, I'd be lying to say uh, I didn't use it every day, but uh, because I do use it every day, Ryan, absolutely every freaking day on my eggs in the morning, I use Heartbeat and I love it. So Um, Ryan, let's talk about your t-shirt really quick. That's very, very timely because we know the incredible Robert Englund is coming to Montreal Comic-Con this summer. We are very excited about that. Both you and I are going to be meeting Robert England. I hope um, I'd love to take a picture with you, me and, and Freddie. And oh, uh, yeah. that is an incredible design from Studio House Designs. That is the um, that is the whole collection of Nightmare on Elm Street in video form. So I uh, love that. Absolutely love that shirt. Great. Great shirt. And um, hey, man, you want to talk about icons? Sigourney Weaver in Aliens. Yeah, one of the best sequel ever. Yeah, this time it's war. I want to stand up and show that one. Love so it. cool. What a great franchise. What a great franchise. What a great t-shirt company. And what a great guy. So shout out to Cody from Studio House Designs. 
for always keeping us looking fresh. And Audio Technica, Canada. Love them. We uh, tried those handheld mics on the uh, when we were uh, on the uh, ground. Yeah. Out in the when open. we were in the field. When in we the were field. That's the word I was looking for. We were in the field. Yeah. Cronenberg, and they work great. So thank you to uh, Mike over at um, Audio Technica. Okay, Ryan. Mm. Did this interview a while back um, with the uh, rush of a bunch of stuff that was coming, namely when Humane opened up last week and we got the chance to um, interview Caitlin Cronenberg. We had to grab it because it was a timely thing. And uh, unfortunately, this interview kind of got pushed on the back burner. Very unfortunate in in my opinion, because I really, really like talking to Noah. Um, now, no offense is our guest this week. Uh, I r- really dig this story from this artist. Um, I love when somebody is able to take YouTube fame and turn it into real life music currency. And it's not something that happens all the time, but it's happening more and more. It just shows you that kids today are looking towards YouTube and a lot of other places to find their next musical heroes. And it just shows you that there's a lot more to people than just being a musical artist now. Um, and with the internet, people want to know more about your life. They want to know more about you, uh, as an artist. And now that we've got this transparency with, you know, all these platforms where you can get to know somebody, um, you might get to know them for years and years as a certain type of person. And then all of a sudden they're a music artist and it's like, what the hell? And it's crazy. Um, so when no offense started on YouTube, it was really, really documenting um, his transition because he's a transgender artist. And that was where he really, really got a lot of popularity. A lot of people were going to his YouTube page to listen to his open transition and, and, and he documented it all. Um, and it was super interesting. And a lot of people were, were glued to the episodes week after week to watch this. And then mixed in there were covers and you could tell that this kid could sing. Now the album comes out, um, growing up on the internet. And I find what I love about this record is that it's honest, it's poppy, it's catchy, and Noah can freaking write songs and can sing. So when I got a chance to talk to Noah, I was like, you know what? I want to do this. This is something that's going to be a little different for our audience. And I don't know about you, Ryan, but what I love about our podcast is that we can talk to whoever we want to talk to. And no, we don't have a program director. We don't have a boss. We don't have anybody saying you can't do that. And yeah. to me, um, there's nothing more punk rock than that. Being able I was going to gonna say nothing more punk rock than that. And seriously, a lot of punk rockers have pissed me off with with said limitations that they put on themselves of what's not punk. I had some friends over from Japan once, and uh, they're 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 a little bit more skater. And I called a punk night, and they're like, "Oh, can you put them on? They're from Japan. They want to play as much as possible." And they're like, "Nah, it doesn't really fit with our night, man." And I'm just like, "Okay, fuck you, punk police." Wow. Like music's music. So anyway, go well, Noah. We- what I want, what I've always wanted about with this, what I've always wanted this podcast to be mm. is a place where we can talk to whoever we want to talk to. Um, and it doesn't matter. And, yeah. and I love the fact that Noah fits right in there because he's got a good story. He's a great artist and he's been, um, you know, kind of a, and, and we talk about it in the interview, he's kind of been, um, not only like a shining example um, maybe that's not the word I'm looking for. Not an example, but more of a source of inspiration for a lot of trans kids. So I really, really love this conversation. I hope you enjoy it too. Our conversation right now with no offense. I'm good. How are you? Good. I'm glad we were able to connect. I tried to get you Saturday night. And then when I saw the time it was set up, I'm like, there's no way I'm going to get to talk to Noah at 7 p.m. on Saturday night when he's about to hit the stage. <laughs> yeah, the I think the venue like screwed us around with set time. So that's so it right. would have worked out. But like it, it just didn't that day. But it does today. So where are you now? We're in Atlanta at a venue called The Masquerade. 
Yeah, I I used to play the Masquerade back in my with my band back in like the early two thousands. I was just in Atlanta. A oh, sick. One of my friends. Um, I, I'm in Canada right now in Montreal, but um, yeah, I have a very very good friend of mine that lives in Atlanta, and my wife and I were there for we did like a bit of a road trip, and we went yeah. to Atlanta. So I was in um in Little Five Points, which is a great little area. That yeah. You should, you oh, that's sick. Out. Yeah, but Atlanta's a fun. So what's the weather like right now? It must be pretty warm. <laughs> No, it's raining. <laughs> You're it, it's not warm. I know I'm I'm used to the rain. It was like it was it was warmer a few days ago. I have no memory of where we were. But no, it, it's not too bad. It's it's like the kind of cold rain that I kind of appreciate because it's, it's it's warmer than it has been. So you're you're um pretty much working your first record ever. Um Yes. Um it's got to be exciting for you because you know a lot of people know you from from YouTube um you know from from your whole story but just now being a musical artist um, and mm. touring and seeing what that's like, um, how has that been? I mean, and, and, and what is it like to go to these venues and have this crowd that knows you for so many things and then is there to see you play music as well? Um, it's got to be it's got to be mind blowing because, yeah. about, you know, being a YouTuber, it's a very isolating thing because you're 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 continually, you know, performing, if you will, to a camera, telling your story, sharing all these things. And then you're sharing this in a room full of people and feeling real energy. What is that like? What, what, what is it like for you? I mean, it's, it's been great. I think this is like a third headline of the US now, which is insane right. saying out loud. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's great. I mean, like I, I started off YouTube doing like covers of like My Chemical Romance songs and yep. just little silly little like ukulele covers. And yep. no, you're right. It's, it is kind of isolating. It was hard for me to realize that like the numbers on the screen were actually people until I fully did the first US tour yeah. in 2022, right. met kids in Texas that were just like, yeah, I've been watching every single video you've posted for the past six years, every single week. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a, you know, it's, it's a weird one to process. Um, but it's been great. Like I, I definitely prefer playing shows to posting YouTube videos. Um, it's, it's way more of like a connection that I have to the people in the room. Um, which is something I, I don't know, like I, I grew up going to shows, like that was the only thing that I really looked forward to when I was a teenager. Like I, I would try and book in as many shows per year that I could go to. Cause that's where I met all my friends. That's where I hung out all the time. It's where I met my people. Um, but yeah, when I first started playing shows, I didn't realize like it, it's absolutely just a community thing. Like um, the, my favorite parts are just meeting people and like seeing their reactions. So can you imagine, um, you know, we all have the benefit of the Internet and be able to connect that way and getting our message across. But, you know, when you hear the stories of how Joy Division met and, you know, they, <laughs> they all met at a Sex Pistols show. And yeah, and they saw Ian Curtis wearing, you know, a, a a a green army jacket that just said hate on the back, and they're like, "That's my person." So it, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's got to be great when you already kind of have that connection, and then they're all able to meet you. At, you know, and and I just think it's I just I I love the stories of the people that had success, you know, prior doing something different, but then make you know a switch to music and and see that other side of it because. There's a lot of people that try to do the opposite, you know, that, that might yeah. be musicians and they'll say, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to get on the internet and I'm going to, I'm going to try to make some noise and they don't realize how hard it is to be a content yeah. creator. It is really hard. So I imagine yeah, when is. you get on stage and you probably enjoy playing live more because you're like, yeah, I got to rehearse for the tour, but like 45 to an hour minute set, no editing yeah. after. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, so I'm, I'm lucky. Like I, I was so stubborn that like I didn't get an editor until like way too far on like I, I mean. i've only had an editor for a few years because yeah. i was so wanted to be in control of it but like right. yeah 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 it's it's a lot of work um and it's again it's like it's not just like sitting in front of a camera for like an hour and filming something it's like the, the, like the more of the audience that that i grow like the more people that i feel like i have to make content for and the more people that i don't want to disappoint and i i want to make the right stuff so like it is just sitting in front of a camera for an hour but it's also just yeah. like planning the videos making sure you oh, say stuff right so and then work. yeah having to watch yourself back i can be like yeah that's not the worst person like it's 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 like mentally and physically like a lot more than i think people realize what it is absolutely um so you're you're in atlanta you're gonna be you're playing tonight right yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, do you find that, and you know, you're saying it's your third headline. Do you find that the rigors of of touring are harder than you thought? Um, and, and and are you do you I mean, in terms of taking care of your voice, in terms of taking care of yourself, do you have any kind of a routine that you're like, okay, I got to do this? And I know, like for example, I know if I stay up 
late that night and I have too many beers that night or, you know, mm. if, I, if I eat that pizza, I know I'm going to feel it. Like, is there anything where you're like, now I know I can't do that on the road? Oh, God, yeah. I mean, like, I, so I, yeah, I mean, like, I, I obviously went to shows growing up, but I, I didn't realize how, how much of a toll it takes on you mentally and physically. Like, I'm a real sickly guy as well. Like, every single tour, tour that I've ever played, I've got ill on, I've got sick on. First US tour, the the bus didn't have air conditioning, so I had heat stroke for the whole tour. Thrown up before the show every day. Second tour, I got tonsillitis for, like, a week and a half. This tour's going well so far, and I think it's because, like, we kind of figured out the routine, but yeah, like I like uh, like we figured out the routine. Like I know that I need to eat well, and we we have an air fryer now, so like we can actually cook food instead of just microwaving stuff. Yeah. Um. And yeah, like obviously rest is really important. Um. But yeah, the voice thing. I feel like like I didn't really have singing lessons. I had I think I've had three singing lessons my entire life. Just it was before I re uh, recorded my first EP. I was like, I just want to make sure that I'm singing correctly because I don't want to start this off on the wrong foot. Um, but yeah, like, I feel like, yeah, like staying up late, drinking anything other than water, speaking too much. I, I think those are the things that like obviously screw you over, but that's something that I struggle with. Cause like I do VIPs before the show, like every single day. Right. Um, so it's like meeting 50 kids and then it's also playing the show and it's also meeting people after the show. And like, sometimes the label comes down. There's just like friends that come to the show. So it's a lot, you have to be on all the time. Um, yeah. yeah so it, it's definitely been a struggle trying to figure out how to shut myself up. <laughs> yeah. Do you have a, uh, do you have like, do you, or do you try to give yourself like days off and where you have, where you have your day off? You're like, okay, on this day I'm doing this and I'm not talking to anyone. I'm holding up in a hotel room or is it more like, I want to go experience everything cause I'm on the road. <laughs> Dude, well, so like I, I've always said that I wanted to experience everything, but I like I have such a limited amount of energy. Like I can do three things a day and need like four naps. Um, yeah. but like yeah, because because of how like hectic everything is, like we do have days off. But like for example, like the last day off was yesterday, and I ended up having like two hour long calls. I I have to do editing as well, and then it's my drummer's birthday, so we went out for like a drink afterwards so like i will try and schedule in time off but like most of the time i end up using it to have a little nap and then get ahead on like tiktoks or that kind of stuff just because i know that like once you're behind on that kind of promo stuff it's so hard to catch up oh, yeah. and when you're on the road and you're exhausted like you just kind of just have to keep up with it but yeah i, I would love to be able i'd love to have the self-control to actually take a day off and like yeah. not speak but I, I haven't figured out that one yet yeah you'll it, it, you'll you'll see eventually you'll hit a wall and you'll be like uh oh <laughs> Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. I've hit that you, wall. <laughs> no, I've I've hit that wall a few times, but like I can't like yeah. It's because I need to do social media stuff at the same time. It's kind of difficult, but I, I hopefully will figure that out. Well, that's what I was saying. You know, it's it, it's there's so much work that goes into being a successful artist on any platform. Um, so mm. when you're doing dual platforms, it's uh, it, there, there's a lot to it. Um, the new record, growing up on the internet, I love this record. Um, I hey, love the songwriting. I think that um. It's it's smart songwriting. It's hooky. The lyrics are clever. Um, and when I saw who your influences were, it made sense. You know, when I saw the yeah, yeah. publishing My Chemical Romance, Green Day, you know, like, like that power pop kind of stuff. Have you been surprised by the reaction to to the record and and the fact that that, you know, are you finding that people are singing the songs when you're showing up? Like, is it? Yeah. OK. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like I. So like I have this thing where I feel like when when I write a song, like I get obsessed with it. I listen to it all the time. I'm like, okay, how can I improve it? And then obviously, like you write it, you change it up a bit, and then you also have to record it for the studio, and then you have to do mix notes and mastering notes yeah. and artwork. And I like I don't like I I'm I'm involved in like every step of the process because like sure. I am I'm very stubborn. Like I like even like the artwork, like I will mock it up. I can't do art, but I'll send it off to somebody and be like, do it exactly like this, but better. <laughs> um so like I, I get very involved in it um so by the time that the album actually came out i i'd been sitting on it for like six months and i had no idea how other people would perceive it because i was so used to hearing it myself that like i knew how i felt about it but yeah I was, I was really surprised like i had like i had a lot of interviews which like a lot of people would find it like a backhand compliment but i was like sick like people were just like look i i was not expecting your album to be this good like be, like people straight out told me that and i'm like dude like i'm I'm happy you enjoy it um but yeah it's been great the reception's been great um there's a there's a good few songs on the album that i thought were maybe a bit too different to other stuff that i'd release and maybe people wouldn't vibe with it but i think um like genre mixing is a big thing nowadays and i've always enjoyed all different kinds of genres um 
and I'm just lucky that people have been receptive to it. But yeah, there's like some weird songs in there. Like Alexa Thymia has like a skit in the middle. I was going <laughs> to say that was the song. Yeah. Song. It's right here on my notes. That, that is the song that I was like, this is, I mean, but then again, if you're a My Chemical Romance fan, you know, yeah. they always yeah. have a flair for drama and for like mm. being concepty. So it makes sense. It really, really makes yeah. sense. What a great song. And just the whole, and the whole idea of that in the middle. So um, you, you were mentioning that you get to, you, you you know, you have your hands in every aspect. Um, and you, even though you do have people that can help you with certain things, is yeah. there anything that you're happy to have help with that you can't stand? Ah, uh, God, what, what part of it don't I enjoy? Got to be something um, like, oh, I mean, so happy I have somebody to do that now. Yeah, I mean, it's like a known thing on tour that, like, I probably know the least out of anybody about what is going on. Like, like I, 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 I can deal with only so much. If if ever there's a problem going on, I will hear about it last, and I won't hear about it until it's fixed. Right. Um. So, like, I'm so happy to not be involved with like politics of like touring, yeah. Yeah, um, right. that kind of stuff. Exactly. But yeah, I, I don't think there's a specific part of it that I don't enjoy like I, I feel like like if I was in a band it would maybe be different but because I'm like I'm obviously representing myself with the music like I've done the YouTube thing and that's all about me and it's yeah. it's the same with the music so I, I find it yeah th there's nothing specifically sticking out that I'm like no I'm happy for you to do that like the thing that like because I was a touring musician for years and the thing that I love the most when we got to a certain level was I don't have to drive anyone like when we got to drive, oh, yeah. it's like, oh, oh yeah, I've never, drive. I can't drive. Well, that's it. So there drive. was that. There was, I don't have to lug my gear anymore. Like there's, even though I was a singer, yeah. I don't have to, I don't have to lump gear like that, like not having to hump gear and all that. That was great. So um, yeah, I, I imagine staying drama free and being like insulated to a certain degree, even though your hands on yeah, yeah, yeah. a bit of that. Ah, it's not my, I, I, I like love to help you, but like, I'm, you know, I'm just, yes, it's gotta be yeah, nice. And I'm like, put your hands up and say that sometimes. It's so good. I like, I get overwhelmed so easily. So I, I'm just glad that like everybody that has ever worked with me ever, is just like aware of that. They're like, okay, like, whoa, we'll, yeah, yeah. we'll sort this stuff out. Um, I think everybody in, everybody that I worked with is in the room with me at the same time <laughs> as well. They're all, they're all giggling. So I, um, one of the things that you do carry um, versus a lot of other artists is that you, you know, you are very much somebody that people look up to um, because of everything you've gone through with transitioning, mm. all that. So mm. is that ever heavy on you? Because not only, you know, are you me? I, 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 you're, you're, I know you're going to be doing that because there's got to be something on you just as a human being that when you're meeting somebody, they're a fan, but then there's so much more. There's a whole other level that you mean to them, you know, that you mean to them on another level that's more than a musician. You know, you mean so much to them on a personal level, on, um, you know, just on a struggle level. It's got to be, that's got to weigh on you a little bit. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, so I, I never intended to be like, a, like a role model or anything like that in terms of trans stuff. But, like, but I, you are. No, I know I am, and I've, I've kind of fallen into it. But like, that's the whole kind of like growing up on the internet thing, where like exactly. I, I grew up in like a real conservative boarding school. So like, I, I could not be myself. I didn't come out until I finished school, and the only place that I could turn to was the internet because I knew that there were other people like me out there and I just had to find them. Um, so yeah, like obviously people um, connect to that a lot because I've kind of just documented every feeling I've had about transitioning, every feeling that I've had about like my mental health, just because like that's that's how I processed it on the internet. Um, so yeah, like it is, it's obviously very heavy and I, I feel like um, I'm very aware that there's been a crazy rise in anti-trans rhetoric. Um, and I definitely feel like I'm responsible at least in part for like combating that and my whole thing on youtube now is that i like to i like to take the piss out of like transphobic hate comments because yeah. one they're like they're dumb like they're stupid and so two dumb. it also gives people the arguments that they maybe didn't have and i can provide them with the data that like disagrees with what the transphobes are saying yeah. um but yeah i mean like coming to the shows and like kids meeting me being like look you're the first trans people trans person that i've ever heard of you're the first trans person that i've ever met i like had to sneak out of my house to come see you because my parents would kick me out if if they knew that i was coming here um so yeah i mean it's very intense and then even like meeting the parents like even even like today there were like these two parents that were like crying being like i'm so glad my kid found you because like he was so sad and we didn't know what to do and like we kind of just took him under our wing and was like look you tell us what makes you comfortable and the, he just showed them my youtube videos um which is is great it's obviously like the nicest feeling to be able to do that for people but like i'm i'm just a guy like talking about my own feelings and yeah. and and people see me as like the voice of you know 
what's right and wrong and how things should be done in terms of transition when it's like such a personal thing. But like it is it I'm, I'm glad I can be that person for people. Well, I think it's beautiful that you're able to to do that. And the fact that you're open enough to be able to share that and be brave enough to do that. Um, and, you know, especially in the I mean, I'm Canadian, but the country you're in right now, as you're. Yeah. <laughs> As you're going through the further it, south we go. Never know where you're getting. Yeah. So, but um, yeah. but listen, I I I I commend you for for taking that on and doing it so so well. I mean, you know, when I when I when I um I started watching your stuff and um my daughter's a big fan and you know when I started oh, watching sick. yeah when I started watching I was like you know there's just an honesty and that's what people need. People need support. You know, mm-hmm. any, I, I've been sober 31 years. You know, I'm I, I, oh, I I'm an Alcoholics Anonymous. I'm an old guy. Yeah. 53 but i need <laughs> but i go to meetings because i need support and that's what yeah like, yeah so you need a community around you so everybody needs that and i think you definitely know, you know you roll through town there's kids i mean you're this is the only thing they're going to have for a long time so that yeah. can, and you know it's it's important so i'm really really glad that you're that not only are you so open about it but that you're that you're carrying that bravely but it's got to be like i mentioned it's got it it's got to be exhausting sometimes yeah oh well, no thank you for that but like oh yeah i mean like like i i'll get exhausted by like a 10 minute conversation let alone somebody like pouring their heart out to me so like it, it's definitely intense it, it absolutely is but like i don't know like i i didn't i didn't grow up really with trans role models i just looked up to like my chemical romance and i was like i want to i want to be like frank Iero. like i didn't have that part of me where i was yeah. like I didn't feel like I needed that representation, but looking back, I'm like, oh, what a world of difference it would have had on me because I, I had to find everything out myself essentially. And that's why I went to the internet because you talk about how important community is, but like that is entirely why I have grown up the way that I have. It's because I was well, searching for that community. And that's the thing, you know, everyone goes on and on about how social media is this, social media is that. But for me, the the beautiful parts of, of Instagram and of, and of Facebook and social media is that it really does bring you a community. And it's, I mean, mm. If you can navigate through the cesspool, um, you really, really can. Yeah. Find, you can really find a great. I, I have so many great friends around the world that I've never met, but we talk. Like, oh yeah, and it's a beautiful yeah. thing. And when you do meet them in person, you're like, wow, like there's more to you than yeah. just a torso, <laughs> right? Oh, it's like whoa, you're not just behind this screen. That's weird. Yeah. Um. So the uh, the tour is continuing. Um. You know the records. It's been maybe just coming up on almost a month, but but few weeks couple couple weeks i think maybe Ew, it was all on the 8th what day yeah, is so it's going to be march 8th so yeah two so weeks like, yeah, yeah, so yeah a couple yeah. weeks in um how much more is i mean this is just the beginning of this of this touring cycle where are you where are the next few months taking you so we so we just released a, a we just released a music video for Alexa Thymia. uh we're which currently is, which playing is a music really really good Thank you. Yeah, that one that one was fun as hell. Yeah. Um, but we're we're planning the music video for Lovely Ladies, which will be okay. filming when I'm back from tour. Um, I'm playing a few festivals in the UK, and then we'll be doing a headline tour in the UK as well at the end of the year. And also just working on new music because, like, we, you know, we released the album, but there's like there's more to come. Well, I was um, going to say most of the time, by the time your album's released, you've sat with the songs for a year, probably. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. 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 So you're just like, oh yeah, I'm glad everyone's loving this, but wait till you see what's coming up. Yeah. Well, no, the thing is, like, I have no idea what's coming up, and that's kind of exciting to me. I'm just like, I'm. We're gonna get back from tour. I'm gonna try and take like a week or two off, and then see what comes up because like i while i'm like on the road or just like a- anywhere like i'll have little voice memo yeah. like ideas and like notes pages so I'm, I'm excited to just have a look through them and see what see what comes out of it well um i i don't want to keep you too long because i know you've got a show tonight um thank you for connecting i'm glad we were able to chat and uh and i really 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 like this record i love the direction and i love this artist i think um i think you're great and i think you've got you're young and you got a long career ahead of you. And I hope you keep doing music and I hope you keep being there for people because it's so important for people to have somebody to look up to. And unfortunately, when you're placed in that position, maybe unwillingly and, but you take it valiantly and, and you, and you, and you run with it um, and you treat it with honor. I think it's really, really nice. So keep, keep being you because you're a good kid. (laughs) Thank you so much. I appreciate that. I'm really glad we got to chat and be safe out there. Um, Just take America with a grain of salt. Okay. Oh, coming, dude! I, coming from I, a fellow, coming from a fellow Commonwealther, take it with a great salt. Yeah, yeah. No, I thank you. I will. <laughs> All <laughs> right. Take care of yourself. See you. Hey, mate. And you know, something about Noah. It's also, it's like you have like 
a skill set that you need of not just being a great musician, but a comprehension and understanding of how important it is to be on social media. Like I have a ton of friends who can play circles around me and yeah. always have, but they are, I, I don't even want to say technological resistant, but they're, just, or even ignorant. They just, there, there's not anything in them that says, Hey, look at me and is willing to go film themselves and put in that extra effort on the internet. But for Noah to document yeah. themselves from day, from, from the very beginning, I even heard a great interview with Ed Sheeran where he's like, there, I, I started playing on you. I started playing on the internet. You can watch my growing pains yeah, and you can see me suck. Yeah. And here's me writing a song and not nailing it. Yeah. And you know, I, I was 16. I got famous when I was 19 in those three years, you know, uh, he, it all, it all came together. So to see that process and know his audience must feel so close to uh, him too, because they, they got to see his band practice. They got to see that evolution and, you know, they're probably thrilled for him to have the success that he has right now. Yeah. So he just got off tour, um, in North America, going to be doing some dates in Europe. Uh, definitely go follow no offense. Uh, if you are looking where to find that it is no offense, Noah with an H fence, F I N N C E.com. Um, and of course you can uh, follow him on YouTube as well. And, um, yeah, man, just, just a great artist, great kid. So I'm really excited to see what the future holds for Noah. Um, going to be awesome. Going to be awesome. And, uh, really, really grateful that he took the time to chat with us today. So thank you to Noah. Um, Ryan, this was episode number 99. So you know what comes after 99? One hundy. One hundy, baby. We have done 100 episodes of the Rockman Power Hour uh, coming up next week. So we haven't done it yet, but it is on the uh, horizon. Um, and we've we've already got our sights set on uh, stuff beyond 100. We've got 101 planned. We've got 102 planned. So May is going to be a really, really exciting month. But number 100 next week, Ryan. We are going to try to get um, a bunch of special guests to come onto the podcast with us. It will be fun. Uh, and uh, we're in the middle of planning it right now. It's, it's going to be cool. It's very, it's going to be a very emotional episode because man, I remember, I remember when we started this out and um, here we are, you know, a hundred episodes later, dude, that's crazy. Yeah, It was exciting. We, we hit the ground running when we first started this show, we were talking about, you guys were talking about Dune for like an hour, and I had never seen a frame of Dune up until that point. And here we are two and a half years later, and I only saw Dune like a month ago. Right. Can I like <laughs> am I Blu-ray back? Yeah, of course. Okay. Anytime. Yeah. Anytime. Okay. Just anytime. Yeah. I keep meaning to watch the special features and stuff. It's um Yeah, you're gonna hold it for another year and say, Oh, you need because like it's not like I have twelve other copies of it. You have so many copies of it. In fact, when I went to your house one time, something was wrong with your Blu-ray. And like a gunslinger, you had another disc hidden behind your back and just threw it and it magically landed into the player. It was the most incredible thing I've ever seen. Not exactly these, how it happened. But... These are all lies. But anyway, yeah. You did have another Blu-ray like ready to go. Another 4K Blu-ray ready to go without missing a beat. So, so our first episode, we had, um, we had Denis Villeneuve. Mm -hmm. Um, we had, um, Bill Rebecca Kelleher, Ferguson, Rebecca Ferguson and Bill Kelleher from Macedon talking about how much he loves Dune. And, um, do you, have you ever seen this? Uh, only in my nightmares. Okay. So this is supposed to be, this is, um, you know, a Dune sandworm, right? <laughs> I got this. That could have scared me off of sex for like another five years. <laughs> it been presented to me as a kid. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, hello. Yeah. We got one of these big boys coming at you. Watch out. Um, yeah, I, I got, I love Dune. So just to show you how much I love Dune. I got this at a Comic-Con. Nice. Some, some guy was selling these. I think it was 3D printed and he just, um, just painted it. But man. So yeah, I love Dune. Anyways, I'm not sure if we'll have, um, if we're going to talk about Dune again. But um, but we will um, we will reminisce over the last hundred episodes. That's for sure. All right, we're gonna give something away right now. Okay, I've been sitting right. this for a while. Have you seen the Jack Ryan show? Uh, yeah, a little bit of it. My friend Victoria Sanchez uh, plays a role in that show. Okay, so listen, yeah. um, this is the Jack Ryan, the complete show, complete series, Ooh, thirty nice. episodes on Blu-ray. I've got the entire series right here. 
courtesy Damn. of our friends over at Chin um, Communications and uh, Paramount Home Video. We have got the entire uh, eight disc set. This is all 30 episodes, deleted scenes from every season and everything in between. Um, if you're a fan of Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan, this is the complete series. And it stars, do you know who this handsome man is? Um, Jim from The Office. Yeah. Do you John, know Krasin- Krasinski. John Krasinski. John Krasinski. Yeah, so this Mel stars- Well, listen, tell Mel to, uh, to. So if you want to win this, all you got to do is uh, like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. Okay? So make sure you're subscribed. Um, make sure you like the episode. And leave a comment below why you need to watch Tom Clancy's Jack Ryan, the complete series. And uh, we will give away one of these copies to one of our listeners. You know, Jack Ryan's actually based on my one of my alter egos named Ryan Jack. Really? Yeah. No, but anyway. All something. right. So complete <laughs> series right here for you. Check it out. Uh, available now wherever you get your home videos. And um, thank you so much to Paramount and to uh, Stephen Shin. And um, there you go. So you can win that right now. Just make sure you leave a comment below and you can win that. All right. Thank you, Ryan, for doing this episode with me. Thank you for hanging out with me. I appreciate it. And we'll see you next week on the 100th episode. Thank you to our producer, Julia Kajerski. Thank you to Heartbeat Hot Sauce, the heartbeat of the Rockman Power Hour. And go over to Heartbeat Hot Sauce right now and grab one of these nice Heartbeat Hot Sauce Dixon flannels. They're great. And uh, make sure you check out their hot sauce as well. And use our promo code Rockman20 to get you 20% off your entire hot sauce order. Thank you to our friends over at Studio House Designs. Ryan, pull it off, baby. Look at that. Love it. Looking good. Thank you, <laughs> Technica Canada. Thank you um, to uh, all of you for joining us on this journey. We really appreciate you. Without you, there is no us. <laughs> Without you, there is no us. I know. I love it. I know. I'm going to yeah. get that tattooed on my forehead. Um, and until next week, we'll see you on the Rockman Power Hour. Fun little fact, Jason's body is almost all covered in tattoos. Yeah. And you are the not the dude to just walk in a room and pull take your shirt off or anything. So no. once in a while you'll be like, hey man, and I'll see a little bit of your like, you know, your mid drift or like, you know, y- y- your chest. And I'll be like, Oh yeah. Yeah. You are covered head to toe. Well, not you head mean- to toe. I've got space still. I'm like, my back isn't done. You will be the most like interesting that. looking corpse one day. Just I was talking to Julia about that the other day. <laughs> that, uh, it's going to be interesting when I'm in the old age home and everything's drooping. <laughs> maybe it'll, maybe your tattoo will look like a Mad Magazine thing where like you have to fold the skin. Probably. And it becomes something else. Yeah, yeah, probably. Uh, All right. <laughs> cool, man. All right. <laughs> See ya. All right. Hey, thanks so much for watching the podcast. We really appreciate your support. And if you're enjoying the podcast, click this link right over here to watch the next episode and click right over here and subscribe. And that way you won't miss anything.